I feel so real. Don't be review. We check for you. During these times of uncertainty, we all miss going out with our friends to watch some good movies, just enjoy a bunch of popcorns with our friend. However, that is not possible because of the pandemic that we're going through right now. And you know, the cinema keeps reopening and closing, reopening and closing. It gets rather tiring. And as we all know, watching movies, right, it's just not about good visual. It's also about awesome audio quality. So that is why we're here today to talk about the JBL 5.1. True wireless surround sound right here, as you guys can see. This is the sound bar itself. It's pretty huge. It's 5.1, right? So the one stands for this. This is a subwoofer. Just in case, if you guys want to see what the box looked like. This right here is the box. As you guys can see, this is what it looks like. Okay, now I know everyone is excited to know what this thing actually sounds like. I am excited too. However, just before we get into the testing part, I want to give a quick brief on what 5.1 actually stands for. But I am not the best audio guy right here right now. So let me just go through my notes one last time. I promise you guys. One second, all right? Where are my notes? Hey, whoa. brother. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who, who are you? Well, I see you're struggling, so that's why I'm here to help you up. I'm Chris, the audio guy you always heard of. Copy review, we check for you. Ah, so you're that guy. Thanks, man, I appreciate that. That's awesome. And now, I want to show you how to set up an easiest 5.1 surround sound system. Okay, let's start with the basics. At first, there was mono, which is just one channel of audio output. Then, there was stereo. This is the most popular one. Two channels of audio coming from left and right. You can also use this on most headphones and new smartphones. Stereo is 2.0. To bring up a notch, you can add a subwoofer and it's 2.1. Keep in mind, the first number in the number of audio channel outputs while the second number is the number of subwoofers. Now 3.1 looks like this. Three audio channels, left, right and center, plus a subwoofer. 5.1 is the same thing. But adding two more real left right speakers at both back corners, usually this would be good enough for a living room. But if you want a home theater, we shall add two more speakers on the side, left and right, and this is 7.1. 9.1 is like the ultimate already. You add two more at the front, but it's like not west and not east of where you are sitting while enjoying the movie. Sometimes in surround sound, you may see a third number, and that is the top speakers. Just for your information, there are some top speakers that are placed on the ground and they shoot outwards to bounce sound off the ceiling. The speaker doesn't have to be physically above you. Now, this all sounds cool, but the big problem here is wiring. If you want to achieve even the simplest 5.1, to connect the speakers from the front to the back, where are you gonna hide the wires? You need to drill your walls or your ceilings, and I know we youngsters are not a fan of dealing with that. And that's where JBL Bar 5.1 comes in. It's easy because you don't gotta mess with wires. Just take the left right surround sound speakers and move them to the back. Ladies and gents, I present to you the future. And that's about it. It's easy to understand, right? Ah, all right, there we go. It's pretty simple actually. Man, Chris, I just wanna... Wait, where'd he go? Despite the sound bar being called true wireless, JBL included a bunch of cables inside the box, wall mount, the remote control. I like the touch of it. The button is also very, very nice if you click on them. We got a power cord, HDMI cable. You got this, something I've never really seen being used. This is called the optical cable. This is very optional. There are only certain TVs that actually has this. AUX cord, pretty straightforward, 3.5 millimeter. This one right here, it may look like a mini toilet plunger. But it's actually not. This is actually a calibration microphone. It's pretty useful. I'm gonna show you guys how important it is later stage of the video. So we're gonna put that to the side. <laughs> this are a bunch of power cords we won't be using here in Malaysia. But kudos to JBL for including that in as well. As we all know, JBL, they've come up with pretty 
nice elegant design you know they try to keep things very simple so that it doesn't look too heavy in your household now let's talk about the design of the sound bar itself on top here you have a bunch of buttons there's a button right here that i've been playing since the beginning of the video it has this very satisfying clicky sound i'm gonna bring it closer to the mic so at the back you have multiple ports there's four hdmi ports one of it includes the arc feature and you also have USB port, 3.5 millimeter jack. Let's talk about the best part of the design of this speaker right here. It's detachable on both sides. So this is where you get to see the 5.1 actually derives from. You have one, two, three speakers over here and two, that makes it five. The reason why they create this detachable speaker is because let's say if you want to really improve the experience of surround sound, you can just place this maybe right next to you, you know, so you have an actual surround sound. And the best part comes right now. Let's say if you're in the midst of an intense moment watching a movie and this thing actually ran out of battery because it is individually powered by a 10 hour long lasting battery. You can just plug them in on this dock that has a magnet apparently and it'll charge wirelessly. Let's say if you don't have the time to actually charge it on the dock, you can actually just plug your USB right here. So it does include that as well. Pretty convenient, I must say. Definitely feel like I'm living in the future now, man. Yeah. <coughs> so everyone know a subwoofer is very important when it comes to giving you this immersive experience of surround sound. Now you might be wondering, hey brother, where's, where's the speaker of the subwoofer? It's actually underneath right here. It's pretty huge. It doesn't necessarily need to project towards you because it needs to distribute that sound. Now, at the back, you can see the power cord over here and also this button, which is used to sync the soundbar itself and the subwoofer. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for to set this soundbar up. You'll be surprised how simple it is actually, provided that, you know, back in the days, you used to have so many cables to plug in your audio system to your TV but now we don't need that anymore because we got HDMI cable and that's all you need obviously you need a TV you need your power cord and you need your HDMI to be connected to the TV let me just quickly do this now this is what it looks like next to a 40 inch TV but we're not done yet because if we want to maximize the full potential of this soundbar right here remember those two detachable parts we're gonna unplug those Right here is the right one. I'm gonna put it on the right side of the sofa, right here. And the left one will obviously on the left side. Let's talk about this right here, this big boy, the subwoofer. Now this one is pretty straightforward too. All you need is a power cord and there's a button. Remember that button that I showed earlier in the intro? Now after you boot it up, all you need to do is just press that button while this thing is on as well so that it can pair with one another. Now we're all set up. There's only one thing left to do, which is calibration. And that is where this thing comes in. So how does this work? So as you guys can see, there's a jack over here. And on the side of the soundbar, let me just lift the soundbar real quick. On the right side of the soundbar, there's a port. And in this port is where you're gonna plug in the microphone in order for it to calibrate. So when I start calibrating it'll release this multiple frequency of waves and the mic will pick it up in this room and then it'll automatically adjust the sound so this is the remote for the soundbar here it clearly stated that it's a calibration button so right now i'm gonna hold it for three seconds and let it calibrate so you guys can see right here it says calibrating and it's gonna start the countdown So the reason why they start amplifying all the sound from each speaker is that so that this mic can actually pick up where the bounces are coming from. So this is why the microphone was meant for calibration. Now let's say if you've plugged in everything on your TV and doesn't seem to be working out with your HDMI, don't forget about plan B, the optical cable. Now this supports 5.1 as well, so that's always good news as well. With that being said, will it actually sound good? We're gonna consume some media, so let's go. I'm really excited, man, let's go. Yeah, because I broke chain of command.
I'm gonna be honest, it really does feel like you're in the cinema due to the subwoofer that you have right here. Everything is just so shaky, man. Like from the trailer, you get to hear everything just passing by you. In extreme situations, I have the ability to break the rules just like you. What's going on? Yeah, here? boy. I don't know if this feels safe. Top of the game. I'm super impressed. I'm literally getting chills right now. The fact that it actually makes me feel like I'm in an actual cinema. So from the first trailer, it was pretty amazing. But because I was putting my subwoofer next to the TV, now I'm gonna move it next to my couch. The port will be facing me. So I got a cup of water over here. Don't try this at home, by the way. So I'm gonna put it on top. And we gotta go ahead and play this Dolby Cinema trailer. Just be sure that the content you're watching contains Dolby Atmos or DTS or whatsoever that supports surround sound. It's Godzilla. Now this is a home cinema setup right here. This is pretty freaking awesome. I don't know whether you saw that, but the cup was literally moving and if you guys actually see it, the water was bouncing as well. The bass is strong, the clarity from the soundbar, it makes me feel like I'm in a cinema. As for music, I'm gonna be using the Bluetooth connection from my phone. And also, lucky for me, my phone actually supports Dolby Atmos. So we do get that surround sound feel. <laughs> It actually bounces. Yeah, man. It's a bit hard to show it on video how it actually sounds like, the difference, but there is a difference that you can hear when you experience it yourself. Okay, right now, as you guys can see, I have a Nintendo Switch because some of the games on Nintendo Switch actually supports surround sound, and Mario Kart is one of it. I'm gonna try out this game. I'm trying to hear whether when I went past through someone, I, if I can actually hear the sound of them being on the right of me or the left of me. Oh yeah! It actually... When that person tried to cut me off, I can actually hear the sound on my left side, which is pretty cool. There. Oh my god. From playing game on this surround sound setup, and I can actually hear the sound of the bike on my left or on my right. So which is pretty interesting because when they try to cut me off, I can actually hear the sound coming from this side of the speaker. So we know it works with gaming. So that's my review on the JBL 5.1 True Wireless Surround Sound Bar. If you think that you're one of those people that would like to have this sound bar. You can get yours at Shopee in the link down below. And definitely stay tuned on this channel as well because here at Shopee Review, we check for you. That's it from us today. Peace out.